Good afternoon again. I had a short walk. <laughs> I went by bus to buy birthday cards for my twin grand adopted twins in Bristol. They're one this week, the 10th. And then I strolled around Hunt Stanton watching all the visitors and um, social distancing and marks, ma masks and not masks and people and um, so surprised actually to see people walking by the seaside wearing masks when they're walking and no one is telling them to wear one. I mean, you're there to get air and I heard some mother saying to a child, oh yeah, you're by the seaside, you must get lots of air and I thought, how can people get air in their lungs if they're covering their faces with masks? And when I went in the card shop, I just showed my um, thing, I showed, I'm exempt from covering my face thing. And they let me in and I bought the cards and off I went and um, met a nice couple a, a, along the beach. They came and sat right next to me, my age group, and we had a long, good chat. It was fascinating. They're from Kings Lynn, so yeah, that was a good. I had a good time. I walked up the road to near Tesco and got the bus. I didn't think I could walk two miles. In fact, I'm sure I can't. I've got to start walking every day, and then I'll be able to walk those two miles easily. <laughs> I knew I couldn't. Anyway, enough of that. I'm going to read you what we had in church today they don't read as much as what i do i can assure you the verses were they give us this paper to bring home and that's all you get no books you have to take this paper away and it, we had ezekiel chapter 33 verses 7 to 9. i heard better preaching on the internet before i went from walsingham a father James Mary and when I came back at midday he was doing the same mass again for other people and he preached just as well at that but you can actually upload it from Walsingham and hear it it was very very good so I'm going to um, read from the Bible the two readings we had we also had St Paul to the Romans chapter 13 only verse 8 to 10 that's not m many verses is it so I'll do those two for you because I found them very powerful, more so because of the priest from Walsingham who preached. Our, our priest is retired, so we'll forgive him. He's 81, and he's marvellous to do the Mass at his age, isn't he? And has to put on masks when he's giving out Holy Communion. He preached reasonably well, though, about love and forgiveness, but it's not in the same class as Father. James Mary. Anyway, um, this, I'll make sure I'm reading the right verses, so uh, before I start, seven to nine is not many, is it? Okay, this is a reading from Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse seven to nine. If I say to someone wicked, evildoer, you are to die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked person to renounce such ways, the wicked person will die for this guilt, but I shall hold you responsible for the death. If, however, you do warn someone wicked to renounce such ways and repent, and that person does not repent, then the culprit will die for this guilt, but you yourself will have saved your life. Now I'll go to the chapter um, Romans. I'll just make sure that I'm in the right one. 13 verses 8 to 10. And this is what they preached on today, both of them. Love and law. The only thing you should owe to anyone is love for one another. For to love the other person is to fulfill the law. All these you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and all the other commandments that there are 
are summed up in this single phrase, you must love your neighbor as yourself. Love can cause no harm to your neighbor, and so love is the fulfillment of the law. That is the word of the Lord. I'll just say a couple of words because I'm not a preacher and I'm not a priest and uh, I just try and remember what, what I heard today about love. And I was thinking the other day when I said something similar that we had to rebuke people and this must have been the scripture that I was remembering when I said to you that we have a duty to correct but we have a duty just to do it in love. So what one would do, you don't go and rebuke people without prayer. You need to pray and pray for the love of God in you before you, if it's a, a, your own child or, or someone you care about or even someone you don't know, you can't just go and do it. You must pray first and you must pray for love because you're not their judge. You're not their judge. God only asks you to love them. So you have to deal with them in love and understanding. And um, it isn't easy to do that. But once you've done that, if you, if you know what it's all about and what they've done wrong and what, what, what you believe is morally wrong, after you've done the best that you can, then you leave it. You leave them to God. You leave them in God's hands. You don't go on about it. It's, it's finished. You have to... You have to be full of love when you're trying to correct someone because you want them to go to heaven. Um, so the, the priest in Walsingham told a lovely story about a young couple that the young woman had asked him to go and bless her home and her flat and he did that and she went back to him a few times and then she asked him if he would bless her boyfriend but he didn't know whether they were married or engaged or what but when he discovered that they were living together he, he did tell them eventually with love that they should not be living together that they should be married and they listened to him and they came and went through the um, program that you have to before you can get married in church six months counseling and they married and they were very happy that was just one example but he obviously did it a lot differently to what I've just said I mean it was over a long period of time it wasn't a, a quick thing or something like that so if your own children aren't living right you wouldn't just go straight away and tell them anything you'd have to pray about it and try and do it with love because you want them to go to heaven but anyone who's done something really bad and evil that's a very difficult one and if they pay no mind to you, then you, you have to get two or three people if they're pretending to be a Christian. If they are a Christian or they say they are and they're doing wrong, you then have to go as a community because being a Christian is not just praying on your own, which we do, but especially more now, you, you're part of a community. You have to pray as a community and live within the community. You're, you, you're not you're not just in a as they modern people say a personal relationship with Jesus when he taught us to pray he didn't say me or my he said our father who art in heaven you know so he taught us to pray together so that's basically what we have to do so I didn't learn a lot today did I really but I'm trying to share it with you and I'm not doing a very good job so I think best you read the scriptures yourself and try and understand better than I did all right God bless you all I'm going to do some other uh, not 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 a Bible daily dip I'm doing something else now all right God bless you enjoy the rest of your day bye